you know, I decided to look over again these charges against Donald Trump in all these jurisdictions. And you know what? There's not a single legitimate charge among them. Let me say this to you very, very briefly. He's attacked by the Attorney General of New York, who is a left-wing reprobate and campaigned as a left-wing reprobate, on a fraud statute that doesn't require fraud. On a fraud statute that doesn't require anybody claiming fraud. On a fraud statute that's never been used before in the history of the state of New York. It seems to me if you're going to go after a presidential candidate, a former president, that you ought to have something more than this statute. But the reprobate who's the attorney general is in front of a reprobate who's the judge who had a reprobate for the law clerk, and you can see the problem. Then we move to Manhattan. We have this guy, Alvin Bragg. Alvin Bragg takes up a case that his predecessor would not. Cyrus Vance, a left-wing elected Democrat, said no. The Southern District of New York said, no, we don't want to touch that. And what is this case? This case is an attempt to take a business reporting, turn it into a federal campaign violation, the way Jack Smith did against John Edwards. The jury in North Carolina threw all the charges out. They twisted federal law, the federal election law, and that's exactly what Alvin Bragg's doing, but worse. He's twisting state law to take what he accuses Trump of, a misdemeanor, turning it into a felony by trying to hook in federal election law. Now, I know this sounds complicated, but what I want you to get out of this is the extent to which they are rewriting laws, twisting laws, making laws in order to get Trump. None of this is fair and square. None of this is in the in the precedent of criminal prosecutions. None of this is in the criminal code, state or federal. Then we move to the clown show in Fulton County. Most of us call it Atlanta, because that's most of Fulton County. A district attorney who is outrageous in terms of her conduct, her lover, we watched this this week, where he's going on about, yes, but you know, my wife cheated on me, so I thought it was okay. We were going to get a divorce. I didn't get a divorce. Meanwhile, defense counsel demonstrated that he had filed several false interrogatories. You file false interrogatory, you do that under penalty of perjury. That is a crime, not a misdemeanor. That is a felony. So he kept having to change it. I think he changed it twice. And what was the best the attorneys for Wade and the attorneys for the state could do? Constant interruptions on attorney-client privilege claims. And I thought, this is, this is ironic in a sick way. They stripped Donald Trump of attorney-client privilege on the January 6th so-called case in Washington, D.C. with his lead lawyer, forced him to testify in front of a grand jury, forced him to bring his notes in front of a grand jury, all done in secret. So they're going on and on about attorney-client privilege to try and protect the hoax, uh, the potential conflicts of interest and criminality of the state itself in Atlanta, Georgia. But when it comes to Donald Trump defending himself, no attorney-client privilege with his lead lawyer. And let's get into the January 6th case. You would think if they had a case of insurrection, sedition, or violence, they'd bring it. But that's not Jack Smith. That's not the Department of Justice. What did they do? They had to find crimes, some of which are never filed against anybody, again, to bring against Donald Trump. So here we are talking about insurrection. What does that have to do with the Ku Klux Klan Act of 1870? Nothing. Sedition. What does that have to do with the Enron obstruction laws that were passed having nothing to do with it? Nothing. What does it have to do with the federal contractor law used to go after crooked federal contractors? Violence. Nothing. And so they say, not only are we bringing these cases, we need them to be heard right away, right away. Everything's at stake. And they go to the circuit court there, three-judge panel, two Biden knuckleheads, one very weak Bush appointee. What happens? You're not above the law. Above the law? You're treating him like he's above the law? Isn't that pretty crazy? No. You're right. This immunity doesn't apply to after the fact. This is very important. We can't destroy the office of the presidency. Well, they're destroying the office of the presidency. You want to know what the evidence is to require immunity that follows the president out of office for a matter like this? The current case. They dug up phony criminal statutes to go against Trump after he was in the presidency. We don't even have to speculate about the future. It's going on right now. And then we have the all-important documents case in Florida. Why is that all important? For half a century, Joe Biden violated, violated federal law, the Espionage Act. 
as a senator, he stole documents out of the skiff. There's no question. As a vice president, he stole documents. He even bragged to his ghostwriter in 2017. They don't know I have these. Well, what are these? Notebook copies of his notes that were taken, that were covered, top secret information. And they're found everywhere. They look under the table. Oh, look at this. It's at the Biden Penn Center. They're there at the, uh, at the Wilmington House, his other mansion that he earned on a postal, a postal worker's salary. He says, oh, look at that. We got it here. We got it there. We got it everywhere. Oh, and he had it when he was running a place in Virginia. Not only that, people overlooked the fact that the prosecutor also found out that he would carry classified information on his person, you know, Ooh. or worse. And what else? In a briefcase. All of those are crimes under the Espionage Act. But we're not going to bring Kimes because he's an imbecile. Oh, okay. Imbeciles are never prosecuted. Of course they should have brought them. You can't prosecute a sitting president. Actually, that's never been tested. I happen to agree with that. But if I'm Jack Smith, rather than prosecutor her, I don't care about boundaries, traditions, comity, C-O-M-I-T-Y. I go for it, baby, and let the courts straighten it all out. But that's not what this prosecutor did. He ducked. And Biden's still attacking him. Okay, fine. Now, what about this case in Florida with the documents? Well, let's see. The prosecutor's been down there. You don't know this, arguing that Donald Trump shouldn't have access to some of the classified information that's going to be used against him or some of the witness information. This guy, Jack Smith, he spent too much time at The Hague. He's got the mindset of some of the people he prosecuted there, some of the genocidal maniacs. This is the United States of America. You stripped him of attorney-client privilege in one case. You're stripping of him immunity. And you've stripped him of executive privilege. Biden did that. You criminalized a case that wasn't criminal. You could have handled it civilly, if at all, that way. And now you're going down there to Florida, where your case should have been brought, but used a grand jury in D.C. instead of a grand jury in Florida. You're trying to do everything humanly possible to get this man convicted. Every one of these damn 91 charges are phony. Up and down. Well, what about the Espionage Act in Trump? Hello? He was the president. When he said, I'm taking this document, or physically took it, that can be considered declassification. The president's not going to take a document in order to be prosecuted, is he? He is the executive branch. The vice president is not. A senator is not. Hillary Clinton was not. He is. So all these complex, first-time raised constitutional questions are being raised, not because of Trump. If Trump would only have done this, if Trump had only had done that, if Trump had only, that's not the way the system works. He's being targeted. The Espionage Act has never been used against a president or a former president. Well, they took documents. That's he's not the only one. He's not the only one. I mean, we have Bill Clinton there with uh, tape recordings in his sock drawer. Federal judge wrote, well, the, the law doesn't really apply to him. Oh, we have the Clinton exception. So none of these cases are serious in terms of the law. They're serious in terms of tying up Donald Trump on time, interfering with the election, every damn one of them. And more and more information is coming out that the Biden White House is behind it all. Bragg, uh, Fanny, uh, even Smith, they've all, in one form or another, consulted with the White House. Isn't that a problem? Meanwhile, Joe Biden who can't remember his age, can't remember his name, can't remember the last four digits of his social security number, accuses the special prosecutor of daring, bringing up my son's death. He had no business to do it. You brought it up, genius, like you always do. The prosecutor had to come out and say, we didn't do it, he did it. Of course, par for the course. But every time Joe Biden goes out there or there's a leak out of the White House, and these are officially sanctioned leaks, that uh, Donald Trump is a danger to America, that Donald Trump is a dictator, that this is an existential threat. If Donald Trump wins, he is communicating directly with all the Democrat prosecutors, all the Democrat judges, state and federal, all the would-be jury pools, whether in New York or Washington or Atlanta or Florida. You have to stop this man, a man they are keep calling Hitler. That's pretty damn sick, too. They keep calling him a dictator, an existential threat. We're going to lose democracy. It's on every Sunday show. It goes on and on and on and on. All the morning shows on the uh, MSLSD and the Constipated News Network and the rest of it. Why are they doing that? 
to affect the body politic, to affect the Democrats who are in position to run the justice system, whether it's DOJ, whether it's the DA here, the DA there, to dirty the jury pools all over the country. That's why they're going to keep running on this and running on this, because Biden himself told somebody, they leaked it, if Garland had only gone after Trump earlier, he'd already be in trial and convicted of something. And the judge in Manhattan on the phony Alvin Bragg case obviously hates Trump. What's the start of trial on March 25th? Why? In the middle of an election. And keep in mind, for months before that, two months now before that, the president has to pre prepare for that case. He has to prepare for this. So I want you to keep this in mind. Just as in 2016, I was the one who exposed the, the activity, the wiretapping, the other efforts to monitor Donald Trump, his campaign and his people and so forth, just by pulling together the public information out of the newspapers. And we're learning more now that the CIA was involved directly in other intelligence operations that clearly Obama had to know and Biden had to know too. The Democrat Party, the media, Washington tried to take out Trump in 2016 and then tried to destroy his presidency. It didn't work. Now they're trying it through the legal system, the injustice system. And they are throwing everything at him except any legitimate criminal statute. And they're throwing every jurisdiction at him, state, local, and federal, all over the country, everything they possibly can to take him out. The question is whether the American people are going to tolerate this. It's clear that Republicans are not. It's clear that conservatives are not. But is it clear that the rest of the country understands what's taking place here? Let's hope over time they will, because Biden has a huge advantage. 99% of the free media, that is, corporate media, are in Biden's camp. They're protecting him from serious analysis over his mental state. They're protecting him from violations of the Espionage Act. They're protecting him from his, his criminal acceptance, his family of money, whether it's from the communist Chinese or some other enemy uh, country. They're in full protection mode, unless, of course, they can knock him off at the convention, which I think they'd like to do if they can, with, say, a Gavin Newsom, a loser like that, or somebody else. But the fact is that while he's in the race, for the media, even though people are saying, they've changed. They've changed for 72 hours, which isn't a change at all. They're going to be right back at it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.